we are bringing you uh, the fourth series on what we want to present and we are going to be talking about graphic organizers today. So graphic organizers, I think every teacher needs to make them her friend. And why? Because our brain stores information in images and pictures. That is how we recall and remember information. We do not have lists of written words in our brain. It's all webs which are actually with a lot of images and a lot of pictures that we have gathered through life. And therefore, it makes sense to teach through graphic organizers. At Chikshangan, we're recommending top six graphic organizers that every teacher must master. The first one we talk about is the Venn diagram. The next one is a fishbone diagram, also known as an Ishikawa or a cause and effect diagram. In each episode, we will be taking up one of them and it will be very valuable for you because we will be giving examples from the syllabus. Then we will talk about a timeline, which is a chronological mapping of events that might be possible in many subjects, not just history. Then the tree diagram, also known as the hierarchy chart or the classification chart, which is very good for taxonomies. We will also bring you one episode on the flow chart as well as the mind map. So these are the six graphic organizers and today we are going to be giving you some examples of the Venn diagram. So let's begin. A Venn diagram is something you must have encountered when you were teaching math or learning math, which is usually used for a set theory. And you might not have thought of how can we use this tool for teaching any subject, but it's a very powerful tool. And let me begin with an example in geography. Let's suppose we are doing climate and we're doing weather. So a Venn diagram has two interlocking circles. The two sides of the circles give distinctive features of the two things you're comparing or contrasting. And at the center, you usually keep the similarities. Venn diagram is very useful for whenever you would explain in two ideas which are very close to each other and students are likely to have confusion. It therefore is also very useful for clarifying misconceptions that students might have across subjects. I'm going to attempt to give you examples from a couple of subjects at least. So this is the center which called, talks about similarities. Now one critical idea and important feature to remember is whenever you mark down one part of anything which is on what you're trying to compare, like for example, I've written it's called study is called climatology. Immediately you must fill in the other side also and say it's meteorology. So it goes parallel. Your criteria for comparing and contrasting is parallel. So for example, you are now defining what climate is. So you must also define what weather is. I might not be going through each of these, but you can of course take screenshots and remember and capture this idea for yourself. You, the examples should go parallel. So I'm saying here that Ladakh has long and cold winters. That's the climate. But when it's weather, I'm going to talk about my own city, Pune, where I say that it rained in Pune for three days. So to show you the difference between weather and climate. Similarly, you say that the climate is the same everywhere. Weather is changing all the time. One important tip from Chikshangan. At the end of the Venn diagram, after you've done the similarities, in this case, I'm doing what is similar. So they're both talking about seasons, temperature, humidity, precipitation, maps, wind direction, and so on. So the similarities between the two are mapped in the central portion of the Venn diagram. So the tip I was to give you was put down a bottom line there, you know, which kind of captures whatever you've done in the Venn diagram. In this case, the main difference between the climate and the weather. Weather can change every few minutes. Climate takes a very long time to change. Let me suggest another example, mathematics. Okay. Suppose we're doing area and perimeter, two ideas where students are constantly perplexed about. You could also add images and pictures, write about what an area is, write about what a perimeter is, give the similarities between both. Moving on, economics. I'm taking something to do with cost and price. Interchangeably used word in daily language and therefore there's a lot of confusion. In economics, these are two distinct ideas. A Venn diagram will help you clarify that. What is the cost? What is the price? Parallel comparisons must go on always. Price is charged from the customer. Cost is the amount of expense. As we know, price results in inflow of cash. Cost results in outflow of cash. I'm comparing as you can see. That's the beauty of a Venn diagram. No ambiguity at all. Okay. Then again, like I said, put down the similarities between the two. 
both are parameters for doing business, both help in margins as we know, and always, always have a bottom line which captures everything you're trying to say in the Venn diagram. So price refers to the money given to the product, cost includes labor, materials, bills, salaries, as everybody knows if you're teaching economics and even if you're not. Okay, one last one from me is about history or civics, which is forms of government. So you can put in wonderful pictures current. What is monarchy? What is dictatorship? What are the similarities between the two? Both are forms of government. Both are very oppressive. And put down government, people, power, examples. I've here talked about the Queen of England. Here I've talked about Saddam Hussein of Iraq. Put that down in examples and always, always make sure you have a bottom line. That's what we wanted to present with the Venn diagram. If you like what we're presenting through Shikshangan, please like and subscribe to our channel.